Hey, I'm going to talk about this John Jones thing. As you guys may know, John Jones was detected with a oral turnball metabola on December 6th. They moved the entire UFC uh, 232 to, from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. In response to this, they kept him on the card and they claimed that he's not been tested positive. Dana White, Jeff Nowitzki, Joe Rogan, all the UFC guys say, no, he's not actually positive. Positive test, but not positive. I'm going to show that they're right. Here's how we're going to show it. We're going to look at the timeline of his detections. We're going to learn a little bit about the different compounds. And then uh, we're going to piece everything together. And I'm going to show, I'm going to demonstrate that it doesn't make any sense. It's not very plausible to think that John Jones was hacking the system and cheating. It doesn't make any sense. Oral turnable, window of detection about five days. The literature is pretty clear about that. Oral turnable is a lot like testosterone. And that's why it works. It has an extra methyl group. That means it has an extra carbon and three hydrogens attached to one of its carbon backbones. This is an organic molecule. You don't need to go into the organic chemistry, but this is basically the, one, one of the differences. And the other difference is that it's chlorinated. And this chlorination might be very important to explain the mechanism of this pulsing. We might talk about this later. But turnabout is, is the same as testosterone except for two changes on its structure. As you can tell, it looks very similar. It looks very similar. Let's see if we can get rid of that glare. No. It's fine. It's life. Whatever. So, very similar. Okay. In three, the compound that was detected in his urine is also quite similar. There's a couple other changes. Chlorine is still here. You get this oxygen change into hydroxyl group. Uh, you get this methyl taken off. So it's it's a little bit different from testosterone or turnabout, but it's quite similar. As you can tell, there's these four rings, three six member rings, one five member ring. Okay. It, this oral turnabout creates this M3 metabolite, which is the, the metabolite that was detected in John Jones. It also creates all these other metabolites. One, two, M2, M4, and a bunch of others. There's actually about 20 of them. <clears throat> these metabolites were shown in about 2009, 2010. To stick around for about 22 days. Actually, one of these metabolites in particular, and other ones have a little bit of a shorter um, window of detection. This M3 metabolite, it's not known how long it sticks around. There's an, an estimation given in 2012, the 2012 paper by Grigory Rachemkov, who is the lead, uh, who's the director of the doping program for Russia, and also the director of the detection program for Russia. Uh, Grigory Rachemkov estimated 40 or 50 days. Reasonable. He doesn't know, though. We don't have the excretion data. We don't have the science on this. The reason we don't have the science is it's not a legal substance. Okay. <clears throat> Here's why it doesn't make sense to say that John Jones was using oral turnable, microdosing, whatever. It doesn't make any sense. August 9th, zero picograms per mil. No, no detection. August 29th, eight. M3 only. None of these other metabolites. We know that these have a detection window of 22 days, right? This is 20 days. Why isn't there any detection of the other metabolites? If he, on that very day, August 9th, decided to dose a little bit, one, one, one tablet, one day, 20 milligrams, maybe 80, maybe, if he was like just going for pure bulk, he's trying to maybe bulk up before a cut near the end, like he's trying to gain some muscle before he had to cut so that he didn't lose as much muscle, maybe, there might be some theory behind that. One day, you know, one day, but it, it is one day, so you're probably not going to get much out of one day, but let's say he did that. Then he was then he was tested again the 20, 20 days later, there's nothing that shows up. It's kind of strange. 22 day detection window. And if he was actually smart and he was actually trying to really gain muscle, he would have done more than one day. He would have done a week. And those, those would have been picked up. Because we're talking 15 days, 14 days. So according to this idea... Uh, so according to this, John Jones must have have a really fast metabolism, unusually fast. 
much faster than what's been documented. It doesn't show up. It happens again here. 20 days between these two tests, yet it doesn't show up. But M3 gets higher. So if he dosed again, it's still not showing up. The other ones, the short-term metabolites, the medium-term metabolites, they're not showing up. So it's consistent, except 18th to 21st. Three days. He goes from 19 picograms to zero. This is a long-term metabolite. Long-term metabolite doesn't go from 19 picograms to zero. It's a long-term metabolite. It's just around at least 40, 50 days, probably much longer. But it's going away within three days. Why? Well, one way of explaining it is, in addition to having somebody who's telling him, hey, in 20 days, we're going to test you again. So you can, you can dose for a couple days, because all they're going to be able to find is M3. And since they're only going to be able to find M3, they're going to say it's this pulsing shit. So you're in, you're in great shape. They're just going to find M3. But in addition to that, somebody's also swapping out the samples. Because after this, if this is a long-term metabolite, this should not be at zero from this day to this day, three days. Somebody's swapping the samples. Okay, so somebody warning him, somebody swapping the samples. But somebody not swapping the samples that well. Fine. But, but maybe they, they, they screwed up for, for a bit, and then they got on back on the ball. Right. So, so now they're swapping the sample, swapping the sample, swapping the samples, but then they miss this day. They screw up again. But even though they screw up again, they told him on November 14th, hey, you got a couple days until the next test. You've got three weeks. So Go, go hit that. Great. So he did. And then they messed up swapping the samples. So sometimes they're able to warn him. I mean, they're able to warn him successfully consistently, but they're not able to swap the samples consistently. Okay. Here's the problem with that. The glaring problem. The problem that of all problems. If I was John Jones, what would I want to take if I wanted to just follow this strategy? If I wanted to, after every time I get a test, if I'm John Jones and I want to figure out what to take, because I've got somebody on the inside that can tell me when my next test is going to be based upon the test I have at that time. Somebody's going to call me and say, hey, bud, your next test is in 20 days, so make sure whatever you've got. It's not going to be detectable. It's not going to allow us to impugn you, to get you in trouble. So take it then. Take it August 9th. Take it August 10th, and you got 20 days. What would I take? Would I take four turn ball? Or would I take testosterone? If I take oral turn ball, they're going to pick up in three. And that's going to cause me trouble. It's going to cause everybody trouble. It's going to cause everybody trouble. But if I take testosterone, my testosterone will spike. My testosterone estrogen ratio will be a little funky for a day. Oral testosterone. It'll go back to normal by 20 days. In fact, I could probably dose for more than a day after I take that test. So why would anybody with a sophisticated system then being warned, you've got 20 days to test. I'm calling you up. I've got this system. I've hacked Usaka. I figured this out. And now we're going to warn you before your test. And... We're also going to try to steal the samples every time. And you've got a really fast metabolism. So fast 
You've never heard about this before. But you're going to take oral toriquol as opposed to testosterone. To, to, to screw yourself. And testosterone is probably easier to get than toriquol. Why would anybody do that unless they were a freaking idiot? Why would they go to all of that trouble? just to take oral turnover and screw up microdosing. It doesn't make sense. Okay, what does? Turnover. Something interesting about it. It's got this chlorine on there. It's got this chlorine right here. Turns out, There's another similar compound called clomid. It's a, uh, it's a gonadotropin analog, so it acts like GnRH, gonadotropic releasing hormone. It stimulates uh, leukocyte, uh, luteinizing hormone. Clomid does. Bodybuilders take that too. They take it after they've done a cycle of, uh, of steroids. They they need that in order to, as the lore goes, I don't know what the scientific studies are, but they need that, according to the lore, to kickstart endogenous production of testosterone again. Clomid, clomiphene. It also has this chlorine on it. And interestingly, a recent study said that The detection window of clomiphene can be 121 up to 261 days or more, greater than 261 days. Wasn't well, that interesting? Here's the theory. For whatever reason, it probably has something to do with this electronegativity, all sorts of things related to organic chemistry. But for whatever reason, this hangs out in the adipose tissue a really, really long time. And interestingly, as our man, John Jones is getting close to his fight, he starts to cut weight a little bit. Cuts weight, cuts weight. Then he really starts to cut weight. Really starts to cut weight. And no other metabolites are showing up, but just in three. This guy. And maybe that's why this is a wonderful long-term metabolite. And maybe, like clomiphene, it also sticks around for maybe up to a year, maybe longer. Maybe two years, maybe three. And each time he cuts, some of it should be getting out of the apples tissue. That's what I think is happening. Now, what's more likely? that John Jones has an incredibly sophisticated team that doesn't know the, that's microdosing, that doesn't know anything about microdosing, but knows how to, to swap samples, knows how to warn John Jones when he's coming, but hasn't even read an article on like Google, hasn't like Google microdosing and doesn't even know the most basics of microdosing. But it's gonna go through all that trouble to cheat and potentially get caught. Or, This is staying around the adipose tissue. Or, Dana White, USADA, other professional organizations who have commented on this. Jeff Nowitzki, Joe Rogan, are all conspiring to make it look like this. This is fake data. Because they want John Jones to win. They want John Jones to win. So they're willing to throw away everything. To risk everything. To make sure John Jones wins. 
How likely is that? There must be dozens of people who are risking everything, who are covering things up and faking data to make it look like this, so that John Jones will win. Gambling everything. Why? So either John Jones is a sophisticated idiot, or there's a massive conspiracy that we don't understand why. Or there's something new to learn about steroid and doping testing, which is about 35 years old in the field, and which is constantly making progress in, in finding things out, and which this test. Turnable came about six years ago. Do you think all these weird things are more likely? Or do you think we still have some stuff to learn about the science?